But yes, there's quite a queue developing at Xi Jinping's door in Zhongnan High, the leadership compound in Beijing. The uh, simple reason is that uh, these countries and state governments are courting trade and investment. This is about money and economics. And uh, it's a combination of things, but the overriding one is that um, China has now uh, ended its pandemic lockdowns, has reopened to the world and reopened normal economic activity. So countries are expecting an economic bonanza out of China and going to collect and approaching the headman himself. But it's also a remarkable turnaround in terms of the politics involved because um, there was a, you know, we've just been through a couple of major crises where uh, China was on the other side of the of the table from, uh, certainly from the West, and yet um, all seems to have been forgiven and mainly forgotten. Yeah. Australia too, of course, as you point out, is redefining its relationship with China, but that has largely happened because China has opened the door. Is it very pragmatic for China as well? Yes, it's entirely pragmatic. On a cost-benefit analysis by Beijing, its uh, political treatment of Australia, which involved you know, a freeze on political contact plus the 20 billion plus in trade, punitive trade sanctions on Australia. But on the benefit side, there was nothing. Australia actually uh, rejected the coercion and uh, toughened up its defense and foreign policy against China. So it was counterproductive. So there was no benefit and the cost was not only that it shut uh, shut down a flow of high quality and very useful Australian imports, um, but that um, it also had the effect of uh, demonstrating that China wasn't fit to join a new trade arrangement that it is now desperately trying to join and is asking Australia's permission to join. Uh, uh, the C CPTPP, it's called, uh, in that very unfortunate acronym, it used to be known as the TPP before Donald Trump pulled the Americans out of it, um, and now it's been reconvened with all the original countries minus the US, and now China wants to join. But it's a consensus decision of the group, and Australia has till now said no, and Anthony, as Al Anthony Albanese put it to me, um, we're not going to agree to China join, joining any new trade group until it can meet its existing trade responsibilities under old arrangements. So China has been uh, playing nice because it sees that this has only been a costly episode for it and it wants in to the CPTPP. Yeah. It is also prepared to politically put up with, for example, Australia's allegiances with the AUKUS um, pact, uh, with the AUKUS deal that's being done. Is it a shift for China or should we be wary of how it is playing? Oh, this is a tactical change, not a strategic change. The big strategy, which Xi Jinping laid out in his very first days uh, as the General Secretary of the Chinese Communist Party, even before he was formally elevated as, uh, to the presidency, uh, is domination. And he set that out very plainly, where he said, I will put China in a position where it can take the initiative and establish dominance. Uh, and that wasn't qualified as dominance. So uh, he's, and he's on course, uh, you have to say, since that speech in 2012, uh, China is very much on course uh, to increase, increasingly uh, uh, dominate. So any, you know, apparent ret retreat in that agenda, any playing nice as opposed to playing coercive is purely tactical within an unchanged overarching strategy of dominance. So when we may have another global crisis another COVID crisis we've got one playing out in the ukraine war where china is not necessarily completely on board with russia but pretty much ha has has positioned itself alongside russia in these past days its intimidation of taiwan continues so you know how does the globe line up with china's assertions over uh, over the uh, taiwan Yes, it's, it's pretty interesting, isn't it? You know, we had uh, pretty much 30 years worldwide as a, as a huge generalization here where geoeconomics dominated and where the trade and investment flowed governments went with it. That was interrupted uh, pretty brutally by the pandemic uh, and, and by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, where countries 
started to overrule market forces, intervene in markets where uh, supply chains were pulled up and disrupted. Countries are starting to manufacture more of their own gear. We have a decoupling of trade, especially in technology between the US and China, and all of that's going on. And yet, uh, countries are now saying, oh, uh, no, it's okay, everything's back to normal. And it's not an era of geo, geo, geopolitics after all, we can revert to geoeconomics. But what's happening in the Taiwan Straits with uh, China's uh, uh, very uh, strident uh, intimidation of Taiwan, military intimidation of Taiwan, is a pretty clear pointer, a uh, pretty clear reminder that the next crisis uh, is just beneath the surface. And there is no return to normal. There is no return to the previous era of geoeconomics. The dominance of geopolitics and geostrategy, uh, that is the new era. It is the new reality. It is upon us. And there will be another crisis, and it won't be too far away to remind us of that reality. And it would seem, despite the US trying to reposition itself very strongly in this region, and of course with its support with Ukraine, that China only grows more dominant in its positioning in the geo, um, ec geopolitics of the world. Well, uh, it, and it's turning out that it's uh, uh, economic weight and the flow of capital from uh, from Beijing, from China, to other countries is just too tempting, uh, is just too tantalizing for governments to overlook. So uh, governments, companies are, it's like muscle memory, reverting to what the muscle's always done and not being overridden by the brain, which should be saying, hang on, we're in a new era, guys. Didn't you notice the pandemic? Didn't you notice the invasion of Ukraine? Didn't you notice that something as a balloon floating over US territory? could cause a serious rupture in relations between the world's two greatest powers. Didn't you notice that the NATO alliance has declared China a threat to its, and I'm quoting, uh, its interests, values, and security? So uh, the world has changed. We have crossed a threshold into a new era of where, where strategy and geopolitics uh, dominates, and yet um, countries just can't seem to resist the lure of Chinese money. Yeah. Well, it's good you remind us. Peter, uh, great to have you on. Thank you so much. Pleasure, Bill.